Kyle Shanahan and his ability or inability to develop young quarterbacks. So I'm on social media like y'all. And actually, actually, I did not hear this on social media. I actually was watching Colin Cowherd. And they, t- they pulled this clip from Alex Smith. And he talked about how he feels that offensive coordinators are better suited to develop young coaches and not just, or young quarterbacks and not just offensive coordinators, just offensive minded coaches, offensive minded coaches are better suited to develop young quarterbacks because defensive minded coaches like a Robert Sala, who he thinks had no, no, he, he had, should not been trying to develop Zach Wilson. And that was where it kind of started. Like, look at some of these young guys and what they need. And some of the basic, basically, to kind of sum it up, he feels like defensive minded coaches are just too conservative. They don't want to, you know, take any chances with young quarterbacks. They just want the quarterbacks to just don't lose the game. Um, they just, they coach them a little bit too tight. They don't want them to make any mistakes. They just don't mess it up, right? They just have that mindset. And typically, offensive-minded coaches are going to, hey, man, what goes into, like, getting you to be the best version of you, you got to make mistakes, you got to play, you got to play free. I can't have you so tightly wound. And I started thinking about that, and I'm like, I have questioned Kyle Shanahan as an offensive coach because of how he plays. I'm like, well, Kyle plays to his defense. And there are a lot of people that are like, well, well, yeah, Croc, he has a great defense, and he understands that. That's good coaching. I'm like, yeah, but it's a little he, – he plays almost to not lose offensively and to let his defense get in position to really close out games. And I always thought that was very interesting, especially when you look at the 49ers offense and you look at the weapons that they have, and you're like, man, you got George Kittle. You got Devo Samuel. You got Brandon Ayuk. You got Christian McCaffrey. You got Kyle Yushek. You got Jawan Jennings. You got Ray Ray McClellan. It's like, you got, you got, you got all these guys, right? You got Brock Purdy back there. You got all these guys that help you have this explosive offense. Yet the way that you call plays and call games feels like you kind of lean on the defense a whole lot. And because of his mindset like that, does he have an issue with developing young quarterbacks? All right, so let's just start with Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo came to the 49ers after playing very minimal games for the New England Patriots. And he comes to the 49ers, and we just see this quarterback that, oh, man, like, you know, not really pushing the ball down the field, not throwing down the field. Uh, everything has to be timing, rhythm. He, you know, he's this uh, quarterback that just super system. He has to rely on Kyle Shanahan, you know, won't push the ball, down, et cetera. And it's like, was Jimmy always like that? I think the answer is no, because if you go back now, these are just highlights. But if you go back and watch highlights of Jimmy Garoppolo at Eastern Illinois, this is the guy that's pushing the ball down the field. He's throwing the ball down the field, <laughs> bombs away. Then he goes to New England Patriots in the offense that is kind of more spread, wide open, but he's still pushing the ball down the field. And it's like, well, what happened to that version of Jimmy Garoppolo? And he gets to the 49ers. And he almost becomes a shell of himself and maybe a little, little unsure of himself and forcing all these tight window throws over the middle, which he excelled at, but also that's where he got in the most trouble, throwing the interceptions. And you look at Jimmy G from when he got to the 49ers and lit it up, right? Now, he didn't light it up, and let's say, like, you know, when you hear the comparison between Brock Purdy and his starts and Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy didn't light up the scoreboard. Uh, a couple games he did, but he didn't really light it up like from a touchdowns perspective. I think in five starts, he had like six touchdown passes. I want to say he had a seventh one uh, that last throw against the Seattle Seahawks uh, when he first kind of came in. But didn't light it up from a touchdown perspective. But everything else that pertains to just winning games, and if I have my guy Teradome on here, he can read off some of the like Brock Purdy stats that were like really good, like at the top of the league. And Jimmy did the same thing coming in. He was first in yards per drive, first in like yards per throw, uh, first in first downs per drive, first in points per drive. Like in those five games, he was at the top of the league and all those things. And that was a guy that just came in, didn't know much of anything, but hey, we're, we're going to win. We're going to go undefeated. And I'm going to be running this offense efficiently. Okay. And then since then, and you can say, oh, wait, towards ACL against 
the Kansas City Chiefs in 2018, and, and that was the reason. And I would say, that's bullshit, because that wasn't where it started. We watched him week one. What happened? Week one against Minnesota on the road, he threw three interceptions, one four pick six, where's the throws down the field, right? You watch him week two against the Detroit Lions. He threw damn near a pick six to lose the game. Right, and they weren't pushing the ball down the field. It was a really stagnant offense. And then you go to Kansas City, and yeah, he got hurt against Kansas City, but not before. I mean, you were dr getting drunk. It was like 35-0 at halftime. Like you're not moving the ball. He shell of himself. What happened? What was the difference? And I think a lot of it, in my opinion, is Kyle Shanahan is very tightly wound. Very tightly wound. It is his way. You have to do it his way. And if you don't, you kind of, you feel that. Like, you feel him, like, hovering over your shoulder. And it, when I think of him developing quarterbacks, right, and I look at Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, how Brock Purdy came into the NFL, and he came in doing well. I don't think what we saw from Brock Purdy was Kyle's development of Brock Purdy. I think that's Brock Purdy. I think that's Brock Purdy. I think Brock Purdy came in. He understood, hey, this is how I am. You know, this is the type of leader I am. This is the type of preparation I have. And I come in, and this is what you get, and I'm and I'm going to be good. I'm going to be a good quarterback, and I'm going to make plays off script, and I'm going to do these different things, right? The guy's going to look. Like, that's Brock Purdy. I don't think Kyle had anything to do with that outside of calling plays to put Brock Purdy in good situations. And Toby, I'm going to get to the super chat as soon as I get done with this. All right. But I uh, appreciate the super chat. But I don't think Kyle had anything to do with like the development of Brock Purdy. I think it was more so these are my plays. Brock Purdy knows how to run it. All right. And Brock Purdy's good. His preparation, excellent. But as it pertains to like getting better, I think we assume, at least I do, You'll see a better version of Brock Purdy this year because that's the natural progression for young quarterbacks. But the more you spend time with Kyle Shanahan, the more is you're diving into his playbook, the more you're diving into what Kyle wants from you and don't venture too far away from this, do the quarterbacks start to get a little tight? Do they start to get a little tight? So that's the one thing I'm I'm really curious. See, do we see Brock Purdy come out on fire? And if it starts off a little slow, do we say, well, the 49ers just start slow? Or do we say, oh, well, Brock Purdy didn't have like a true offseason. That's the reason for it. Or do we go off of what we've seen from Kyle Shanahan, which is Kyle. <laughs> and Kyle has this kind of overbearing thing with, with his guys. That a lot of people have said, well, you can't get de develop quarterbacks, can't develop quarterbacks, can't develop quarterbacks. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but it does feel like he has the most success with his quarterbacks right away. And then it starts to kind of get a little weird. Now, Matt Ryan might be the exception. People are like, hey, wait, he won an MVP with him. Matt Ryan was already hella good. He was hella good. All right. And I think a lot of people, they look at the MVP Matt Ryan year, but Matt Ryan was thrown for 4,500 yards in seasons and stuff like that prior to Kyle Shanahan showing up. And he always had Julio Jones. So, uh, but so I don't think he just developed him. It was just, hey, can you run my offense? Oh, you can run my offense? Great. I don't think that had to do with development. Development would have been RG3, a guy who came into the league. You, he won rookie of the year. All right. <laughs> RG3 run rookie of the year. And then after that, it was, oh, nah. Did the guy do this, the guy do that? Obviously, he got hurt. That probably has something to do with it. But RG3 became a shell of himself. After his rookie year, where he had his best season right away, he was never the same. Now, we could say it was the knee. We could say, you know, he got banged up. We could say, we could say all these different things. But ultimately, I'm seeing a trend here. So, y'all let me know if you guys are seeing a trend with Kyle Shanahan and his ability or inability to develop quarterbacks, especially one of Trey Lance, who Maybe needed more of, ah, you can't be tight with me because I got to make these mistakes. I ain't never made them before. <laughs> I ain't throw no interception in college. Huh? Or not in that full season. Full season, no picks, 28 touchdowns, another 14 rushing, whatever it was, national champion. I ain't go through none of this adversity. Can I go through it in the NFL? No, you can't. This is a ready-made roster. Do it my way or I'm going to cuss you out. That's what it feels like. 
and everybody has their most success with him right away. Think about it, right? Think about even Trey Lance. What was the most success? Now, and I know he played well against the Houston Texans, but remember his first game, right? Trey, Trey Lance's first game against the Kansas City Chiefs. He comes in, and it looked like a quarterback that was free. Everybody remembers the second pass, but you guys remember the first attempt that he had, right? He drops back. They had those deep curl routes. Kyle probably wanted him to throw that. He didn't throw it. He bailed out to the right, rolled out, threw a strike to Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk dropped it. That was Trey Lance's first attempt, right? Threw a strike to Ayuk for first down. Ayuk just flat out dropped it. And then he comes back, and he dials up the big shot. Boom, 80-yard touchdown. And then he comes out. Uh, I remember they were backed up. 49ers got the ball on like the two-yard line. And what did he do with Trey Lance? All right, here we go. I don't know what happened. It said that I was uh, unplugged for a second. All right. Now, I was getting in my bag, y'all. I was getting in my bag. All right. But um, basically what I was saying was, and I don't know how much of that was muted because I, I look at the mic. I don't, I don't look at the – I mean, I look at my camera. I don't look at the mic. But I was talking about Trey Lance. And when he first came in, right, he comes in against Kansas City. And the first drive, he drops back. And you got the deep curl routes. And he bypasses that, even though Kyle probably wanted him to throw that. And he steps up in the pocket. And he rolls out right. And he throws a strike to Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk drops it for a first down, right? Just dropped it. And then he comes back. Don't worry about that. We're going to, hey, big play action. Uh, we're going to throw it down the field. 80-yard touchdown to Trent Sherfield. Free. And, and then moments later, Trey Lance on the, in the red zone. Or not in the red zone, excuse me. <laughs> backed up with his back to the goal line on like the two yard line or three yard line. 49ers are pinned back. He didn't come out. He didn't run power with Trey Lance. He didn't run draw with a, a you know, play conservative. We're going to do a play action pass on the goal line under center. No, all this crazy run stuff. And Trey Lance throws a corner route to Charlie Warner for a big game, right? And you just see Trey figuring it out. Okay, I got to figure things out, but I'm just playing with this certain freeness, right? And then ever since then, it's just like tightly wound, tightly wound, tightly wound. And it gets to a point where it's almost like this kind of like suffocating from Kyle Shanahan. So when we look at him developing guys, does he have to have a guy that comes in and just ready-made like Brad Purdy was just ready for whatever that opportunity was, Purdy was ready for it. Can Kyle develop quarterbacks? And it's going to be a big question. It's going to be a big question. I can't wait to see Brock Purdy come out this year. And do we see a better version of him, which I think most of us assume we'll see? Or do you see a guy that starts to go backwards a little bit because Kyle Shanahan starts to get really tightly wound with his guys. And the more you're around him, the more that play starts to kind of with young guys. Matt Ryan, great. But all the other guys, it got a little weird.